Hello, my name is Matthew Harrison. I'm a farming system scientist from the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture. Uh, and in this webinar, we'll be looking at the process of simulating a tree belt and a wind a wind break integrated with a crop in APSIM. So essentially agroforestry, trees and crops. And so the, the file here you can access from the example files uh, in APSIM Next Generation simply by going to your Home tab. Go to Open an Example. Go to your C drive to program files, to your AppSim next generation directory, to examples, to agroforestry, and then go to the tree belt example. Just double click on that and then open it up. And so what I've done here is I've already I've pre-ran the, the simulation, so you can see it's gone for 20.46 seconds. The way these are organized is we have a data store, and so that's showing the outputs of a run, a run simulation. So in your context for a blank simulation, you won't have this, so you always have to save it to your directory first. So hit save as and then save it to your C drive. When you're opening an example from the C drive from the program files, it won't let you save, so it'll come up. As soon as you press run, it'll come up with an option to save it in a new location. So to run the simulation, you right click and then you go run AppSim. You've got a number of other options in that uh, menu there. So uh, a tree belt, the tree belt example in this case is set up with the parent node and a number of child nodes underneath that. So we have the clock that determines the simulation duration. In this case, it's only for a year. The summary file, which comes out with all the detailed daily, uh, daily inputs and daily outputs of the model, as well as warnings and errors. So make sure these boxes up here are ticked. So you won't have this until you've run the simulation. So it's giving us, for example, the soil type that's used, the nearest town, the location, the apps soil number, so the apps that's the AppSim soil number, as well as its location and other details there you want to go through. The weather here in this case, in the default case, has come from your examples folder, so it's the delby.met file from your examples folder. If you're in Australia, you can get silo data. If you're overseas, you might need to set up a weather file in this format, so with radiation, maximum minimum temperature, minute, millimetres of rainfall, fan evaporation and vapour pressure and then you can get summaries of the weather data uh, using this tab and so when it's reading appropriately these summaries will come up. You have your soil arbitrator, you can't do anything with that, that's a partitioning module within AppSim that determines then supply and demand and amongst other things. Now we're getting into the tree details here so the way this simulation is set up is we've got a sowing rule that determines the type of crop that you sow and the crop type uh, and then we have a windbreak system. So we have the way AppSim runs with the tree module is you don't actually have a tree uh, as you do have a crop in other modules, you have a tree proxy. So you have temporal data, you have spatial data and you have constants and then it plots the data under here. So we have the height of the tree uh, uh, as well as the end demands and the shade modifier. So we've got different dates here that specify its change over time, so it's a constant height in this case. We have the shade, so the shade would be 80% above the trunk and as you go outwards you get less shade. And then you have your root length density parameters and how they vary with depth. So you can see that they're rather empirical coefficients there. So underneath the tree we've got very dense root systems, so pretty much 100% density, down to 10% of the soil volume is filled by root length density between 120 and 150 centimetres and you can see that matrix filled in in that way. Then we have the root radius, a number of other parameters there. The extinction coefficient there determines the amount of light intercepted and, you, and your parameters that you put in here are plotted down here so it's useful to compare and have a look at how they look like. And we have a tree report. Now I've put in a few extra values here. We have the clock which we're using as which will output as date, so you can change this parameter to anything you like. Whenever you have an as, you can change that number there, you can change that variable there. You have We have parameters coming from the tree proxy node, so the main node is in square brackets followed by the variable, and you might say, well, how do I get that variable? So the way that we do it is to type in the variable name, so in this case we do tree proxy, and the reason it's called tree proxy is because it's there, so we want a variable from the tree module. You hit the point and from the IntelliSense system you have a number of variables that come up there. 
So, we, and you can see the descriptions there. So we have extinction coefficient, and that might be quite useful. So to get that, you just double click. And then we might also put in uh, tree proxy, and we might want make sure you get the brackets right, and we might want height, for example. And so that's the distance from the zone in tree height, or or units is in tree height. So we'll go. Uh, this one here. We might also have the other variable tree proxy. Uh, this one here height, so that's tree height. So double means it's an array, uh, whereas double without brackets means it's a single parameter, so it's a single value, a daily value for each daily value in the model. We might also want to look what heights today it looks like. Some of these variables might not work, but we just give it a try and see what happens. And we put height today, so that might be quite useful as well. Uh, and then we have, so that's the reporting structure. You can see in here it's the data, uh, and this is because I've ran the simulation. It's got the, the, the day, the simulation name, the zone, the water uptake for the different soil layers, we have other variables here. We have the heights of the tree in millimetres, and then we have the tree heights there. And this is it hasn't got those additional variables because I haven't run the simulation yet. Now the way this is set up is a windbreak system. So each one of these is a rectangular zone. Okay. So in here we have the length of the row is 100 metres, the width of the zone is 5 metres. In here we describe the particulars of that tree row, so the tree itself. We have a local microclimate, you can't do anything. A microclimate, you can alter these fact these values, but I encourage you to leave them the same. We have a reporting structure for this tree row, similar to the main tree report, and we have variables in there that operated in the same way that I did with this tree report. We have daily values, so it's also useful to point out that you can uh, you can sum values. So what we've done here is we've summed the uh, total nitrate in the profile, uh, and we've said we'll we'll use that as an output called total NO3 and so in your results you'll see that variable. We've also summed wa wa soil water in the first layer down to the fourth layer and recorded that as variable SW 90 centimetres and so on and so forth. We have a fertiliser module, you can't modify that. We have a soil organic mo matter module, make sure you look at these details, read what they mean and see if they're appropriate to the system. Some of these have drop down menus, so we're sowing wheat in this simulation. We have wheat residue because we're sowing wheat and then we have soil details. Now these are standard to any AppSim simulation. So we have physical details, we have initial soil water values, we have fraction of biomass, inert and fresh organic matter, as well as soil carbon, chemical parameters, initial soil N, a fertilizer module, uh, initial soil nitrogen values, these values don't have a lot of effect, uh, a modifier according to soil temperature and a nutrient budget. You can add and delete factors here as you like. I encourage you to leave these as the same though because often soil parameters uh, need most of these components but you can take them out and try running the simulation and see if it works. So that's the first row and then this is five metres away from the tree line and what we're doing is we're sowing wheat. And so we've got exactly the same components. We have slightly different reporting so we want to look at the above ground dry matter of wheat the grain weight, size and number. We have so we have harvest reports, so that's that's reporting at wheat on harvesting. We have this daily report which is which is processing the report daily and we have these variables which are coming out daily. And then we have a number of other zones and then we have our graphs. So what we do then is we run our simulation. Now this might fail because I've put in some additional parameters here. So we just run the simulation if we've got this green line here that denotes its processing, that's probably a good thing. If we have an error, that'll turn up in this area here. Just wait for it to finish processing. And then we can have a look at some of the data and then potentially plot some of the results. So now it's that noise means it's processed adequately. We go back here to the tree report. We have the tree variables on different days. Just scroll across to the right here. We have the tree height today, we have the tree heights in millimetres, we have the proxy for tree heights, and then we have the K value. So some of those variables that we added have been processed appropriately, so that means we can plot them. Let's just have a look at a yield transect. So what this is doing, just down here, we're getting this data from the harvest report. 
the x variable's distance from the trunk, the grain weight, so you can see that grain weight as we're closer to the trees is less, so that's about 250, uh, well, two and a half tonne to the hectare, and as we get further away from that tree line, our yield is going up. So we're going up to four and a half tonne to the hectare, 50 metres away from the tree trunks. And you can change those and look at different variables. So we might want to look at grain size, and it follows a similar trend. Grain number, also similar trend. Uh, and the other variables there are probably not worth looking at. So we'll just go back to uh, grain weight. We'll just have a look at biomass weight. Mm, follows a similar trend in grain weight. So now we have soil water, and this is showing soil water in each different zone. And so a, a useful facility of this graph is is to vary by zone. So we're, we're varying by zone, and it's plotting the, the changes in soil moisture over time in different layers down to 90 centimetres underneath the tree. So that's quite useful. I've also added a graph here, tree height. So this is plotting tree heights. It's showing the maximum height is 5 metres. And we might want to say, OK, where do we want to get the data from? Tree report. Now let's have a look at those additional variables. So tree height 1 is 10,000, so that's in millimetres, so that's fine. All the others will be the same. And what about that other value that we added? Yeah, so that's height today, so that's 10 metres. And so in that way you can add different variables and explore how they look like. That's all I wanted to show for today, but thank you for watching and see you in the next webinar.